Hi, welcome back to Real Auto Reports. I'm Jonathan McGrew, and today we have the real video, the real review of this 2013 Ford Taurus SEL all-wheel drive. About mid-tier in the model range, and well-equipped at almost $36,000, we have a lot to tell you about this vehicle. So let's hop in the driver's seat and get going. All right, so welcome back. We are inside the 2013 Ford Taurus SEL all-wheel drive. And really what that means is that we're in about the mid-grade car. We have the all-wheel drive system added to the standard Taurus. So we have a lot more capability in inclement weather. And we have the 3.5 liter V6 engine. So let's get going and see what all the details lie in store for you in this Taurus. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna mention is really the model structure of this car because the 3.5 V6 is not really the, uh, the newest motor uh, for this Ford Taurus. You can actually now get a two liter four cylinder EcoBoost motor and that does use the turbocharger technology that Ford has really become uh, famous for because they don't offer a V8 anymore in these cars. And the, the two liter EcoBoost four cylinder is not in this car, but it is available. But here is the kicker. It is only available in front wheel drive. So you would not get it mostly here in Colorado where it is all wheel drive territory. At least most people here like all wheel drive because of all the snow that you can see in our other shots that's on the ground. And it did snow about a foot yesterday and now it's all gone. And that's, that's really Colorado weather. But what that four cylinder is gonna buy you is more fuel economy, especially out on the freeway. It's gonna provide you a 32 mile per gallon highway EPA rating. And that is what it's really for and you're still gonna have 240 horsepower. Now that's a little low for a car this weight. This, this car is over 4,000 um, pounds, the one we're testing. So 240, you're gonna notice that difference. Let's tell you what we have here in the all-wheel drive. In the all-wheel drive, we have that 3.5 liter V6 engine. This engine has 288 horsepower and will have uh, uh, good performance, I think it's made into a six speed, uh, what they call a select shift automatic transmission. If you go up to the show, which is the performance edition, it will have paddle shifters and still have the select shift six speed automatic transmission. Now the show will have 365 horsepower because it uses this similar EcoBoost motor to the Explorer Sport that we tested here on Real Auto Reports. So 365 horsepower in a car of this stature and it has all-wheel drive standard. In all the other model lines, you have to add the all-wheel drive as an option. Something else that is interesting though with the 3.5 liter we have here is that you can use flex fuel. Now flex fuels have kind of gone in and out of fashion over the years here, but it is still nice to have the option to use the flex fuel in this vehicle. So the E85 is what we're talking about, and that's really produced from the corn growers of America. So you could choose to use that if you can get it in your town. In Denver, there are only a couple stations where you can get that, so it's not as valuable to us here at a mile high. But all in all, what this brings together is a pretty nice performance package. It's a vehicle that drives well, has good pickup off the line, and uh, well, we'll get into more details about what it's really like to drive after we cover the features. So in this car, we have a lot of features, I think, for what is a mid-tier model. What we have is leather seating. We have the sync system with the full navigation package. Uh, of course, you have your select shift automatic. You can't get a manual anymore in these cars, not even in the show. And uh, you have your mirror placement. Oh, actually, that's a big deal. When I first tested the Taurus, when it first came out, this was back in 09 for the 2010 model year, the mirrors were way up here. And even of someone from my height, this is a reach and it's not comfortable and it's not easy to get to. So now they're down here on the door where they are with most of the Ford vehicles. Again, you have 
features like a similar steering wheel to the Ford Explorer Sport that we tested, even the Ford Flex that we tested. And so everything is going to seem familiar, especially if you are used to Ford vehicles. So what you're going to have in this car is the dual screens on either side of the speedometer. What that really means is that you've got your entertainment features on the right side and your trip and vehicle settings on the left side. It's standard in a lot of the upper end Fords now. The Ford Explorer Sport that we tested has the same gauge cluster. So does the new Fusion that we'll be featuring on Real Auto Reports very soon and the Ford Flex. They all have it. And so if you're used to driving a Ford, you're going to be able to get into this Taurus and really know what you're doing. Now, if you're not, we're going to go over how you use those screens. They're dual color screens on either side of the round speedometer. And you have these steering wheel controls right here up front that let you uh, basically navigate through it just by going left, right, up, down, and hitting the middle OK button to select. You also have on the steering wheel your cruise control here and your phone seek for the radio and the volume and the voice control for the sync also all very easily accessible here in the front of the wheel. The thing is is that this wheel is leather wrapped. This is actually an option in the SEL. If you are not in the SEL model and you're down in the SE model, you'll find that this is not a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's a molded plastic. So just keep those things in mind. But all in all, the functionality and usability of these features in this car are very good. Of course, it's got the claim to fame, the sync system. It even has the little badge down here in front of the console powered by Microsoft. And no, that doesn't mean that your car reboots and gives you the blue screen of death. Actually, they've put together a really nice package with these where when you say something like, ding, say a command. climate, climate, say a command, 72 degrees, did you say 82 degrees? No. What temperature? 72 degrees. Did you say 72 degrees? Yes. Setting temperature to 72 degrees. See, that's how it works. Now, you do have to be pretty diligent about your enunciation with this car. And if you have a British accent, give it up. Um, because I haven't seen it work very well for any of my British friends yet, but I hear that they're actually releasing this system in the UK and it is getting better. And with every model year, we find that it becomes more and more usable. The other thing though, is that you have your redundant controls all here in the center stack. So you have your seek for the radio, your tune for the radio, my temperature, the dual temperature, and you can change it to dual just by hitting that button. You've got your auto, rear defroster, front defroster, AC, everything very accessible. Your fan speed as a dial, which is really nice because it's an easy thing to reach for. If you have a phone call, you need to just click the fan speed down real quick. And then, of course, your volume and power for the uh, radio only. Now, the, the funny thing about the radio power button is what it really does is mute it. It doesn't actually turn the sync system off. This stays on pretty much all the time because you can also control all the climate features from up here, including your heated seats and all of your fan speed options. And that goes for the information that's up in that corner, the, in the entertainment in this corner, and then as you can see, my phone is connected to the Bluetooth in that corner. So, and then you have your home button and a setting button. Now the setting buttons where you're going to get to do your ambient lighting and we'll cut away and show you what the ambient lighting looks like at night. You can change the color, which is really cool. There are a number of different colors, purples and oranges and reds and blues. And it's, it's just really neat to see it lights up in here under the door handles. It lights up in here under the cup holders in the back seat well, uh, foot wells and in the front foot wells really nice touch it's a touch of class um, and it's kind of fun to play with not really functional but it, it makes you feel like you've got something neat in your vehicle okay so let's talk about the driving of this car it rides well it's got good comfort the steering is nice um, I, what is interesting is when i drive a lot of different cars and you would have to test drive a lot of different cars to get this perspective i think 
what I notice is that the steering in the Taurus is a lot quicker, uh, meaning that it, it reacts to your input faster than some of the other cars that I've driven. And that can be a double-edged sword. It can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. And it's really more about how you like to drive and what you feel comfortable with. Also, what I notice about driving this car is that the steering is, uh, is not, it does not provide as much weight or feedback, even though it, it's electronic power assist. So it's assisted by the electric technology it just, it still feels a little bit uh, out of tune with how heavy this car is. But all in all, it provides for a real comfortable driving experience. Just, it, it, you have to decide whether the weight and the feedback and the, and the experience is what you want. I personally would like a little bit more from it, a little bit more weight to go with the size of this car. At over 200 inches long, this is a big, a big boy. And uh, we, we, you know, we've gotten used to the different steering and the different audio manufacturers. And this one is very typical to Ford. So Ford people probably will find it right on par to what they're expecting. Now there's also the ride. The ride of this car is good. It is going to be on the softer side because it is not a sports tune suspension. It's, uh, it's not like the show. It's not going to have that uh, stiffer, more flat cornering feel. It is going to be a comfortable ride for your occupants. The thing uh, that is interesting is in the back, you notice, uh, you notice, I think, a little bit more of the gyration of the suspension because those seats feel like they're higher up. Like when you get into the back seat, you actually feel like you're sitting on top of the real the the rear suspension almost, and it's that's not really true, but it's a thick padding, and you feel like you're a little bit higher up in the back, I think, than you do here in the front seats where the seats are adjustable for height. All in all, though, I think of this as a really good executive sedan, um, and what I mean by that is it has a nice bold look but it's not too over the top. It has a ton of trunk space with 20 cubic feet of trunk room, and it has good interior uh, space, although not as much as the Dodge Charger in the back seat, which is interesting. They've actually, at Ford, they've decided that the trunk space, which beats the Dodge out by over three cubic feet, is more important than the two inches of rear leg room that you're going to see it's about two inches don't don't go crazy there it's it's about two inches difference between the rear leg room in the dodge charger and here in the taurus so there are definitely some different perspectives and some other some other along those lines in terms of comparison is that like with this uh, taurus you're going to have less hip and shoulder room than you do in the Charger as well, which really goes to the type of body that this Taurus has. It is a little more um, shapely in some ways, and it narrows in places, and what that means is that you see that in the interior dimensions of the vehicle. All right, it wouldn't be a real auto reports without a couple gripes about this car. Now, I personally find the inside of this vehicle a little claustrophobic. I don't know what it is exactly. I think it might be the different interior dimensions uh, in the padding here. I find the these A pillars are very large and when I'm coming up to a stoplight or something where I need to see out the right corner of the car, I notice that those pillars do seem to obstruct my vision more than I've noticed in other sedans of this size. That's overcomable. Now, it also, in this, at almost $36,000, I do not have blind spot monitoring. I don't have any of those cross-detection features that I had in the Explorer Sport. Now, that was a much more expensive vehicle, but one of the things that is interesting to me about that is that the Altima that we tested, the 2013, had all of those features and a 3.5 liter V6 and was at $32,000 as tested. So you're paying more for this Ford. Now you're getting a pretty a bigger car, but is it really providing the value that you need? That's the question you have to ask yourself. You have to step up to a higher model to get the blind spot monitoring in the mirrors. And I really, in 2000, 
uh, 10, they did not have these little corner blind spot mirrors out here on the edge of the mirror. And now they do. And I have to say, I really don't know that I like them. They take up a part of the mirror real estate and they're small enough that I find them actually hard to tell what it is you're trying to look at out in that corner, especially at night. Because the Taurus, just like the Charger, and I griped about it, this and the Charger too, it has very narrow mirrors, unlike some of the, like the Cadillacs and stuff that have nice big thick mirrors. Now, if you get the blind spot monitoring, what you're going to notice is that those mirrors actually do tend to increase in size on a lot of the cars. All right, so that's the real video, the real review of the 2013 Ford Taurus SEL all-wheel drive. Just to recap, this vehicle is about $36,000 as tested, but as you know, with the front-wheel drive, you can get into one about at $29,000. It is a 288 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6. You can go up to the show and get the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, and that will get you 365 horsepower. This car does 21 miles per gallon combined at, from the EPA. That's their rating, not ours. And it is a big sedan with a lot of trunk room at 20 cubic feet in the trunk. It has some great touches like these indicator lights here that turn on when you open the doors and when the running lights are on. It has a nice bold look up here in the front and a lot of good features. It is also a good driver with the electronic steering or it's actually an electronic power assist. And uh, we like what Ford has done with the Ford Taurus. Now, there is some competition on the market that you might want to look at like the Charger and uh, even some stuff from Chevrolet like the Malibu and Impala. If you want to keep it American, if you want to keep it in the uh, foreign family, there's a lot of competition like the Sonata that creeps into this price range and the Nissan Altima. You can see some of those cars on our YouTube channel. And for Real Auto Reports, I'm Jonathan McGrew. Please come back again and again, and we hope to see you down the road.